So when I'm mounted, I'm going to show you guys two escapes. One is like a basic first line of Jiu Jitsu style escape that still is arguably maybe the most effective mount escape on me. Because guys with good mounts at a high level have very wide knees. And with the wide knees like this, it can be very hard to roll a guy. So you get a guy who's as tall as me, who's say got an extra 20 pounds on me, and I'm just gonna be hard to tip over because I've got very wide support posts. However, the wider my support posts are, the more space in this triangle here, right? So that's what we're gonna work on tonight. So most of you guys have done a million bridge and rolls from mount. But if that's not working, that's because I've engineered too big of a space this way. So now we're gonna take advantage of it by not trying to roll, but to try to extricate ourselves back out away from the guy. So if I've got, I'll borrow you Peter, uh, please, Kay. So Peter's on my mount, I'm in big trouble. Submission wise, I wanna keep my chin down, my elbows in, and my hands up to protect my neck. Once I'm here, if I try to roll him and he doesn't go, he's gonna to have to have wide knees. So I'm trying to roll him, but I can't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my right forearm across his belt or waist. I can place my left hand on his knee, and now I'm gonna push with my toes, and I'm gonna push my butt straight back until my butt comes past underneath his pelvis. Once I've done that, I can now reorientate and I've got my hooks in. For the sake of this drill tonight, you guys are now gonna do a butterfly sweep or a hook sweep. So you're gonna sit up, you can give the guy a hug around his arms, under his arms, one arm over this way, one arm over, one arm under this way, it doesn't matter. But if I wanna sweep him to my right, I must control the post on that side. So if I sit up and want to sweep it this way, I have to stop that arm. I now fall to my side and I kick him over and for tonight, we're going to land in mount. So as soon as my hook has done its job of lifting, like as soon as gravity is now doing the sweep, not my quad and body, I'm going to take my hook out. When the work is done, retire the foot. Okay, so now I'm in mount and it's Peter's turn. So he's tried to grab my arm, he's tried to roll me and stuff, but I've got wide knees. So now he's going to brace that forearm on my waist. He can use the other hand to help or push, it doesn't matter, wherever it feels comfortable. And he's going to be real quick, he's going to scoot his butt straight back. Boom! And now I'm on his hooks. And now he can sweep me this way. Sweep this way. So he's got to control my arm and lift me over straight to mount. I try to roll it. He separates. So I'm going to go straight back. And now I can sweep him over. Boom. Right there. But we're going to go to mount. Okay, today, just because it's going to make our drill flow. The advantage of going to mount is that's a six point move. Like if you compete, that's six points. Two sweep, four. If you go to side control, it's safer, but two points. So three times is more, much points. That's, that's a lot, right? So that's the advantage, but the risk is you're more likely to be caught in half guard or quarter guard. But if you were a good passer of the half guard or quarter guard, it would be in your interest to risk that. Because then you go for your six points, but if he snatches your foot up and you get your foot out, how many points do you get? Someone tell me. Does anyone know? How many points for a pass? Three. How many points for mount? Four. So you get an extra seven every time you get that foot out. So you see some of the best competitors, you notice, seem to get caught in quarter guard a lot. Sometimes getting a foot out for seven points, that's about the easiest seven points you ever get in a jiu-jitsu tournament. You know how hard you have to work for a sweep or a takedown? You're telling me I get seven points when I get my foot out? I'll get my foot out any day. Right? So that's just something you guys can do. So that's called an elbow escape, or a hip escape, or a shrimp escape. It's very, very, very effective. The biggest thing that I can tell you guys is just turn on your side before you do it. Because un unless you have a, a big belly, you're normally gonna be wider this way than this way. All right? So if you turn on your side, 
you're going to occupy that triangle better. Okay? You don't want to be trying to get out like that. You want to turn on your side so you can get out that way. So make sure you turn on your side, push your butt straight back, sit up, sweep them over. Okay? I'm not worried about the sweep tonight, I'm worried about the escape. Advanced guys, this next one's one of my favorites. He's mounted on me. Okay, I'm gonna defend and I'm gonna grab onto the belt. In no gi, I'd use like my uh, karate chop area of my palm on his hip bones. But that's neither here nor there. We can grab the gi, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give him a little bump upwards like this. So his ribs or hips or belt is over me. Don't do this when they're up like that because you'll just lift his gear. Give him a little bump and now you've got his belt. Now I'm gonna keep my elbows in, my feet are close to my butt and I'm gonna lift my hips up and now I do the last two centimeters with my arms. Okay, we don't try to bench press people up. We're gonna use our hip. Here's the tip. If you do it explosively, you don't even have to use your arm strength at all. He'll be right up. Okay, you don't need to bear his weight. His arms are bearing his weight. So it's not as heavy as you think. But getting him up there, cause his hips are now below, his, like, that's hard. Like, I can. Ugh. That feels like a 100 kilo bench press though, at least. So you don't want to do that. So, hold his belt or hold his hips, give him a big bridge and put him up there. Now, you can bring two feet through, sit back, take his post, sweep him over. Or, if you are a more like a footlock guy, uh, sorry, pop him out. If you like footlocks, you can bridge him up, get one knee in, and now push him to the side, get your right foot into his hip, and we take our ankle lock position here. So remember with an ankle lock position, unless he turns this way, you can't turn that way in the rules. So you have to turn this way. However, if he wanted to hang out here and not let me turn, I'll be right here. That's a sweep. You are mounted on me, I'm happy. All right, so let's have a look at that one again. This is one of my favorites. I've got him here, I lift him up, and I just get my left knee in. Now I push him away and get my right foot in. You'll notice how I'm almost doing like a Steven Seagal elbow to the guy behind me. That's to hold him here. So then I can dive under and I have him here. If I could reap, I would reap and roll that way and take the ankle. But you're not allowed to. Okay, so I'd be here. So I'm trying to roll him this way, like that. Or, I'm here and I'll pass your guard, but if you stop me passing, I'll be straight away back to that foot. And then, I can get up and do it again. Okay, so that would be the advanced variation. So get your left shin in, push him away, it's really easy, then get your right foot up. If you're a flexibility nerd, You can get your right foot here, and then you push them away that way, and get your knee in later. All right, so sometimes I'll do that to guys, if I want to footlock them that are crossing. You know, sometimes uh, guys cross their feet underneath your back, like it's like an accident, and they're crossing their feet, and you're, they're trapped under there. I did that one. Put the foot in the hip, but I can do that. Like, I can do that, that's no problem. But some people can't. But you don't need to, you don't need to do about there. So you choose, you can do the flexible guy way, but even myself, I will always try to do the bench press way. I'm not a strong guy. I just do it because it's the best technique. Because I can always use my flexibility later. I'm not gonna rely on that as a bonus. Strength and flexibility and fitness are a bonus. Don't depend on them, use them if they're necessary. Okay, so let's do these two mount escapes. Beginners, revision, in mount. I'm here, I'm trying to roll him. His knees are too wide, I can't get him. So brace, go straight back, and now sit up, roll him over. Advanced guys, hands in the belt, hip up, and get your two knees in, and now he can sweep me here if you like, if you're a butterfly guy. 
If you're more of a footlock guy, like Pete's a footlock guy, so he could hit me up, put his knee in, and now just put the foot over, and now here we are. Okay, obviously as a heel hooker, he would probably try to reap and go for a heel and I'm done, like, big time. Because the other foot's behind here, I can't spin out. Okay, really good, like, really great position. But it's illegal in the gear. Alright, so, we've got to do this. Do them both, do one, do all three, don't matter. But let's escape them out and survive. Okay, let's go! Thanks for watching the video, guys. For more videos, click here. To subscribe to this channel to get all of our awesome videos, click here. And if you'd like to have our hour-long series for free on footlocks and how to defend footlocks and leg attacks of all kinds, please click here. I'm Coach Tom, guys. I'll see you next time.